year after year, you know, a decade after decade, that actually, you know, the children are abused, but they're told which, you know, where they're going to work. So, uh, you know, well, you'll go to the police and, you know, so you'll be able to sort of, uh, and it's all sort of jobs that are uh, respected jobs. You know, none of the people that have abused my daughter, you know, or any form of low life or anything, like that, they are all highly respectable people with highly respectable jobs. Yeah. Well, they're not highly respect, respected anymore, you know, in no. that sense. Absolutely, no. absolutely not. And also, uh, what, what is, if we talk a little bit about the, the future here now, then the, the, some of the next steps potentially uh, and how, how you guys think that the case will, will um, evolve here in the next, well, say a couple of months or maybe even a year of, a year ahead. What, what is the primary thing that you guys are trying to address now? Is it just getting the word out again to the mainstream media, getting it known then and, and also in connection with that? Do you think anyone of you that this will be received then by the people? Because again, this is so easy to, to we're we're away from these subjects because it's just too difficult. It's too dark. It's too uh, horrifying to to look at it and, and to to recognize that it's actually is taking place. So one of the huge obstacle it seems from my point of view is that 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 people are, are they they refuse to to face these the, the problematic uh, situation. But but is that potentially changing now? Could it be that people? Uh, I or, think, or willing I, think to. Quite so. I, I think so too, and I think by the reaction in Aberdeen, I mean, if you look at it at a very basic level, we have been trying to uh, warn all the, all the people in Aberdeen. Now, if you're a person in Aberdeen and you have children, and you know that these people may be your neighbours, now you're going to react to that, aren't yes, you? Yes, yes. Anybody exactly. would do. You think, my gosh, uh, do, do I want to be living next door to someone like that who commits those sort of crimes? So these are the ways in which we're trying to uh, to get it across at the very basic level. Is, is the only way to to, to stop it. Mm. You know? Yeah. Exposure, because you know they're they're hiding behind uh, you know people of power at the moment mm. that are protecting them. Yes. Protecting them in law, protecting them in every way, you know, protecting their identities, everything. Mm, absolutely. And so what I, I think I read somewhere as well that you guys are, are you're continuing various uh, uh, demonstrations, I guess, in one way, or at least try yeah. to get the recognition being out there on the street in front of uh, parliament buildings or government buildings and things like that, right? Yeah, right? What, what, what is happening? Well, well, that, that, is, that is the case, yes. Um, we, to a certain extent, uh, I, I've been warned not to enter Scotland because I'm likely to be arrested at any time if I cross the border. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I think both Anne and Holly would feel very uncomfortable also being in Scotland at the moment after what has yeah. happened to them and the kind of regime that is in power there. To let you understand, I've actually had my window shot at. Really? Yes. Yeah. Yes, just a, this was in the summer, actually, this past summer, when we were actually putting a lot of pressure on the people, as we are at the moment. Mm. Uh, Anne, they, they, Anne and Holly live in a, a very peaceful part of, of England, uh, where very few crimes ever ever uh, committed, and they had a shot fired at their window one night mm. at head height. It, unfortunately, the, uh, it, the, the, uh, the pellet bounced off the window, but uh, obviously it could have easily gone through and caused damage or even death to either Anne or, or Holly. Oh, so this is these are the kind of people that we're dealing with, Anna, and of course they have murdered somebody. Uh, somebody's already been murdered. Well, exactly. So there's yes. a killer out there. Yes, uh, absolutely. And uh, how do you feel, Anne, in terms of uh, security and safety? Or, are you getting any support in terms of there from the local police? Are they aware of this, or, or how, how? We we have made them aware. Yeah. Yeah. They they have been alerted to the fact. Uh, you know, if anything, you know, we we have reported every. You know, because there's been more than than that. You know, we've, we've had things. Uh, you know, they've come in the garden and damaged stuff and, you know, all sorts of different, you know, annoying, you know, sort of stuff. But, you know, the, the shot at the window was, uh, yeah, I would say, the, the most serious. Severe, uh, yes. You know. Yeah. And so... I mean, I'm I'm very you know encouraged in that sense. I mean, it's, as I, as I mentioned in in the introduction, it's it's a horrifying story, and it's easy to not go into this area because it's just so so horrifying. But in that sense, what's positive with it to me is that it's finally coming to the surface, and 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 uh, at least one of the stories. I mean, for instance, as I mentioned before, the story up here in Sweden was a little bit in the media for maybe a week or two, then it quieted down, and now we don't hear anything about it again. But the the trick, I guess, here in one way is to is to keep keep at it and, and oh, keep. Oh, you've just got to keep at it. Yes. Because they they'll dampen down a story any way you know that they can mm. you know either gagging the media or you know threatening 
you know, a person, you know, to keep their mouth shut. Well, and, uh, yeah. That's right. Well, of course, one of the ways in which we were trying to bring it to the fore was using the, the coming election in order to do so. Yes. So of yeah. course, they, the, uh, obviously the authorities are terrified of me standing on this particular issue because uh, obviously whether I would have got in, you know, whether people have voted me in is quite another matter. But what it would have meant was that the question would have to have been addressed by the other candidates. Yes. It would have had to become a real issue. I would have forced the, all the other candidates to talk about this story. And that's what really frightens them. Yes, absolutely. And so how are things going on that front? Uh, or you, what's the next step in that process for you, Robert? Uh, well, the, the, I'm waiting to find out what is going on here because it's, it's actually created a really, really difficult constitutional issue in Britain. Yeah. Because no one knows whether electoral law uh, supersedes the law on me being uh, bailed and uh, charged under uh, the breach of the peace. Uh, because what has happened is that I, in fact, have been prevented from actually entering the uh, the, the county of Aberdeen, Aberdeenshire, mm. and I've been prevented by my conditions from actually distributing leaflets telling them about my campaign. So what has happened, in fact, is that I have, all the people of Aberdeen South, the constituency for which I intend to fight, still do intend to fight if it is possible, mm. have been actually disenfranchised. And they have been disenfranchised because the ruling party, the Scottish National Party, have actually tried to silence someone who is... Uh, providing information that is damaging to them. Mm. That's a very dangerous precedent if you just kind of forget about Holly's case for just a moment. This actually means that people can be suppressed by use of, by abuse of the law by a ruling party to stop somebody actually bringing those those uh, issues into the public domain in, in, in a general election situation. Hmm. And this, I think, is a very, very alarming um alarming development in, a, in what is supposed to be a democratic country. Yeah, and and it isn't then, in that sense. It is it, it is not, uh, it's it's more like a fascist dictatorship in that yeah, sense. It's exactly, it's exactly like a fascist Please dictatorship. Yeah. Yeah. Some, someone wants to say something that you don't like and, yeah. and uh, them up, you know, yeah. well, bang them into jail. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. how, how is it then in terms of the of UK law as opposed to, to Scottish law? I'm not familiar with in terms of, you know, are, are you guys under the United Kingdom's okay. jurisdiction or how does that work? Uh, it's, it's a very difficult one, Henrik, and this yeah. is again the one that the legal professionals don't seem, even the top ones don't seem to know to the, the answer to because what has happened is that uh, Scotland has its own elections, but there's also a, a wider election, of course, uh, as we're looking for the whole of Britain which kind of then Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, England all uh, treated more as equally when, uh, when there's a general election. But what this has meant, which has also made, a complica made it complicated, is that the ruling party in Scotland is the Scottish National Party. And they were elected, obviously, under an internal Scottish election. Mm -hmm. But what it has meant, the Scottish National Party, for whom I or any of my countrymen in Wales or Northern Ireland could not possibly have voted for, are preventing me from standing in a British general election. Right, right. That's very weird. That's strange. That, that, that's a weird thing by itself. Yes. Because yeah. had it been perhaps one of the other parties, it could have been argued if it had been, say, the Conservatives or the Labour Party or the Liberal Democrats. People could have said, oh, well, you might not like it, but your countrymen voted for that party and you'll just have to lump it. It's a <laughs> democracy. But, of course, we couldn't have voted for the Scottish National Party. So that doesn't hold true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that adds to the complication. Yeah, absolutely. And and how about bypassing that altogether? How about, is there any, um, if you can put it and use this term, salvation from the European Union, the European Court? Can 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 you guys go directly to them, for instance? Do you know? I, I guess we could, actually. But this is going to be something that's going to take a long time. That's yes. the only trouble. And, yes. and time is not something that is helpful to us at the moment. We have a tremendous mo momentum on this. And we don't want to get sidetracked too much by bureaucracy that might take four or five years. Yeah, we, we haven't, yes. And of course, we've got to think about the children who are probably being abused at this present time. We've got to do everything to protect them. It's not just a question, I, I know Anne feels strongly about this, it's not just about Holly and the other children sure. and Anne's suffering and Holly's suffering. It's about the children who are suffering now and will go on suffering That's until right. these people are brought to justice. Yes, yes. So there's an urgency about this. And to actually get sort of uh, enmeshed in bureaucracy is not a help. We're there to try and prevent, not only to bring the people to justice who perpetrate these crimes, to, to, but to prevent further crimes taking place. And, and in, in a way, when, when I started my fight, 
I tried to do it that way, you know, mm. go down, you know, the, all the routes of, you know, going to all these different bodies, putting in complaints and everything. And here I am 10 years down the line, yeah. you know, yeah. 